Hi, I'm Dr. Mimi Guarneri, and I'm Medical Director of Guarneri Integrative Health at Pacific Pearl La Jolla. And it's a lot of fun for me today to be interviewing a very dear friend uh, and fellow physician, Dr. Nancy Lonsdorf. Now, Nancy, <laughs> you have a unique background. I mean, John Hopkins Medical School, right? Yes. <laughs> and, then, and then psychiatry <laughs> at Stanford? Yes. So you're really a psychiatrist by training. Well, that was my start, but I, I kind of jumped ship early and <laughs> went into the integrative field before anyone else did. Before anyone knew what integrative medicine yeah, was. Yeah, it was still alternative and hadn't right. been integrated. So uh, Okay, yeah. and uh, I know you because of your expertise in Ayurvedic medicine, and uh, I personally have taken some of your workshops and your training. Uh, and I don't know too many people who have 25, 30 years experience in, Ar in Ayurveda. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, I, I learned Ayurvedic medicine shortly, actually during my residency. And actually I had my first experience with it, with my personal health as a tired intern. Mm. And I w felt so much better for months after just three days of some treatment that I said, to myself, this is something that can actually give health, not simply treating disease. I'd studied for so many years in top institutions, and I never learned how to create health. So this was something that I wanted to do for my patients. And by definition, Ayurveda is science of life, right? It's, exactly. Isn't that what it means? Exactly. That's what it means. And it encompasses every aspect of a person's lifestyle, their diet, and who they are, their individual nature. And that's something that was totally missing, of course, then from medicine. The idea of personalized medicine didn't exist. And, and even now, I think that Ayurveda adds another dimension I like to call ultra-personalization because it really dives deep into their mind-body connection and identifies what kind of category they fall into and then what kind of diet might be right for them, what kind of lifestyle. Some people really need to go to bed early, and some people you know, can uh, be a little more liberal with their routine. Well, you know what I love when I first did my training with you and uh, Stuart, you know, uh, Dr. Rothenberg, was really learning that there, that's that we are different in how and what we can and can't do. I mean, I learned very quickly that I have a fiery personality, right? And I think you confirmed that with my pulse at one point. And uh, that fiery personality is someone who uh, tends to need to eat and not skip meals, right? <laughs> and when I was an intern, I didn't know that, so I'd go for long periods mm. without food, and mm. uh, I would get kind of cranky, you know? <laughs> and it wasn't until I understood from, mm -hmm. the, from the language of Ayurvedic medicine that no, for my body type, uh, I should be eating proper meals, and I also learned what types of foods to eat because mm -hmm. You know, Pitta, you said, Mimi, you have a lot of fire. And I said, okay, what, it, what does that mean? He said, well, if you can uh, get angry easily or you can uh, get heartburn. And I said, ah, heartburn. Now you're talking, uh -huh. right? And I had heartburn. And I remember you said to me, no spinach and no onions, no carbonated beverages. And, and, and I cleared those things out. And I never looked back. Huh. I don't have heartburn. Wonderful. Right? And... Um, I think uh, it's, you know, we just had our natural supplements conference mm -hmm. this weekend. Yeah, right? fabulous. And uh, we had talks on Ayurvedic uh, medicine. And it was quite funny because a physician ran by me in the hallway and he stopped. And I had seen him as a patient. Huh. And this is someone who was having a lot of panic and anxiety and running to the emergency room and mm -hmm. so on. And we not only... Uh, worked on, his, from an Ayurvedic perspective, on his nutrition and his lifestyle. The thing he said to me, which I will not forget this weekend, he says, you sent me to Transcendental Meditation, and mm. it has changed my life. Mm. And I could see it in his being. So this, mm. it's truly a body-mind-spirit approach, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Consciousness is the basis of health and of our body. And this is something that Ayurveda really understood very deeply. And in fact, Maharishi Ayurveda is that restoration of the consciousness-based Ayurveda, which brings the whole mind-body connection back together. So we really um, look at 
everything about a person. And we can't ignore anything. As you know, as a physician, if you leave something out, you're not going to have that full healing. Exactly. And what we've evolved in Western medicine is this. What's your problem today? Here's your pill. You know, this ill to the pill and who the individual is the lifestyle they lead, their relationships, how they spend their time. I mean, all of these things are fundamental to health, how, whether you sleep, whether you move, what, you know, and, and, and it really is um, every other global healing tradition, Ayurveda uh, being at the top, that emphasizes health creation as opposed to just disease treatment. Yes, and interestingly, um, one of the things that I'm focusing on now is cognitive health and brain health. And uh, in that study, along with um, everything I've been doing with Ayurveda, it's come to clear that the research now that's coming out on lifestyle and on the bodily functions, just natural functions of the body, are confirming what Ayurveda has been saying for 5,000 years. For example, one of the recommendations for brain health is to not eat for three hours before you go to bed mm -hmm. and to have a 12-hour span from your evening meal until breakfast. And Ayurveda has always said that. It says you should eat by 7, you should go to bed by 10, and don't eat after dinner until the next day. And it turns out that the brain, well, we'll be saying in Ayurveda that the body goes through a cleansing at night. And if you bring in a lot of food right before you go to bed, you interfere with the cleansing because the body's in a cleansing mode and you're putting in nourishment. So this is exactly what it's been found, that the brain, for example, goes into a phase called autophagy where it starts to eat up and metabolize waste from the day and from the past, things it wants to get rid of. But if you eat right before bed, it doesn't go into that healing mode effectively. So here we are um, 5,000 years later and research is validating these principles that have been there for so long. Well, I always say that uh, we are trying to catch up with our technology and our uh, science to understand some of these basic principles. So for example, transcendental meditation again has been around for a very long time and now we have studies showing a 48% uh, reduction in heart attack, stroke, and sudden death in people who just meditate 20 minutes twice a day. Uh, we have research telling us that meditation can turn on the enzymes of longevity, right? Improvements mm. in uh, your telomerase activity and then your telomere length, which really is your longevity enzymes. So, and uh, we heard a great talk this weekend at the Natural Supplements Conference about epigenetics, right? You have this book of life, your genes, but you can turn genes on and off. You can tag your genes depending on how you live. And so we're understanding it now through the language of science mm -hmm. for the first time ever. So let's talk, I know you wrote this amazing book, and, I, and this is your second iteration of it, uh, Ageless Woman, which mm -hmm. we of course all want to be, <laughs> and um, that you have a very large specialty in women's health. Is that correct? Yes, I've worked mainly with women and their problems. I do see men, but uh, I think women, especially when I first started in the f this field 30 years ago, women's health had been largely ignored. And there were many aspects of taking care of our bodies as women that I think even today women are not aware of and really would do well to learn some of these principles so that they can avoid some of the many problems women get besides just the mi more minor things, I say minor, but it can be major for women, PMS, or you know, then fibroids and ovarian cysts and polycystic ovary syndrome, and it goes on and on. So many complications that women come into, which Ayurveda would say largely are because we don't know how to take care of our bodies properly before our menstrual cycle, during our menstrual cycle, and throughout the month. And if we do, and if we understand our, our nature, our body type, and we understand how we need to eat for ourselves, um, to keep in balance, and we have a balanced lifestyle through the month, we should be able to get rid of 80, 90% of those problems. And they're big problems, and they're, they're huge in this country. So many people have them. Well, there's many health challenges, and of course, many of the women we see at Pacific Pearl uh, come in because they either have 
uh, GI complaints, you know, gas and bloating. They have problems around the menstrual cycle. And then many women are, you know, a little older like myself, you know, and you're saying, okay, <laughs> how am I going to prevent those hot flashes? How am I going to get a good night's sleep? You know, mm -hmm. the, we, we change. And I think, you know, you need different things at different points in your life. Exactly, and um, the life cycle is something that we need to also understand, and we can, Ayurveda gives some unique insights into that and how we can handle that, that transition from premenopausal to postmenopausal, which is a natural transition and should be smooth, but it isn't for so many women, largely because of the way we've treated our bodies and how we're dealing with that transition. So I, I've had patients who within, I think of one lady um, in Florida, I just did a wellness consultation over the phone with her, didn't even have to see her. She was having really bad hot flashes. And I did an evaluation Ayurvedically and found that she had too much of this pit of the fire mm -hmm. going on. Uh, we did some intervention with her diet and herbs for about six weeks, got back together over the phone, and she said, I am so much better. I'm sleeping. My hot flashes are gone. And it can be that simple. It can yeah. be that simple. Right. And it does require people participating in their care. Yeah. But uh, we've seen those same type of uh, miracles here, and uh, I'll just say it was the most valuable, I got many valuable things out of the Ayurvedic for Health Practitioners course that uh, you did. Um, but one of the most valuable ones was in taking care of my female patients with atrial fibrillation. Hmm. Because y women, thin, uh, what we will call vata types, mm -hmm. right? Vata is another body type, right? Mm -hmm. So if the pit is the fire, the vata is the air and the mm -hmm. wind, right? And so um, much more creative, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's a different person. And I started to realize, oh my goodness, there's a couple of different kinds of AFib personalities. Mm -hmm. There's the, the, the kapha guy, who's like the Santa Claus kind of guy, mm -hmm. right? And this is the person with sleep apnea and high blood pressure. This is sort of the... the you know, this, the, the couch coggy potato, couch potato, right? the couch potato. And then I have these women who are like butterflies, you know, <laughs> and they're the exact opposite. And yet they both have atrial mm -hmm. fibrillation. And it really helps me to uh, treat these women very differently, to adjust the diet, to make sure they're getting the right sleep, get them off the raw, cold foods. Mm -hmm. You know, something as simple as ice water going down the esophagus past the heart for some people, is enough to trigger an arrhythmia. And it was really uh, that training that opened my eyes to this. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you for that. Oh, that fantastic. And uh, I, so now I, I know you, you are moving in a direction that's near and dear to my heart, which is in cognition and cognitive decline and memory loss and, uh, you know, in cardiology for the last 25 years. We've never said... Um, you know, it's just one thing that causes cardiovascular disease, even though most um, physicians just prescribe a statin therapy. Um, we mm -hmm. know in innovative, uh, integrative cardiology with our innovative approach that it's about inflammation, it's about oxidative stress, and we say, you know, it's, uh, I've heard your lecture, which was great, like a house has 30 holes in it in the roof, and we're just going to give a statin to patch one hole. Well, many of the things you're doing for brain health now is the same for heart health. So I'm wondering if you can talk about the protocol you're using for brain, because we see people coming in, women around menopause with memory loss. Uh, we see uh, people with inflammation with memory loss. We, you know, we see all sorts of issues. So can you talk to that? Sure. Um, Alzheimer's and even lesser degrees of cognitive change or decline, whether it's due to menopausal hormonal shifts or it's due to perhaps early stages of something that's going to become more serious. In the past, there really wasn't anything that could be done about it. And billions of dollars have been spent on trying to find the magic drug that will turn that condition around. And the reason why those drugs haven't worked have been because it's a multifactorial disease. And in fact, it's not, you could say it's not just one disease. It has many causes, as you alluded to, over 30 causes. And Dr. Dale Bredesen of the Buck Institute on Research for Aging has had the brilliant insight and discovery that after studying drug trials for 25, 30 years in his lab, 
that there are many different factors <clears throat> that influence the amyloid production or the production of this sticky plaque material in the brain that clogs up our thinking and prevents memory. And what he found was that it is inflammation. It is blood sugar. It could call it, in some ways, Alzheimer's is diabetes of the brain for some people. Yes. Now, for some people, it's due to lack of nutrients and lack of hormones. And I see that a lot in these Vata types, as you alluded to, the thin women who are after menopause, and maybe they don't eat very much food, and they are careful about their weight, and by this time in their life, they get deficient in a lot of nutrients, particularly B12. And then there is the toxic, which is a very challenging field because we are awash in toxins now in our modern society. We're exposed to so many things, even from utero now, that are actually toxic to the brain. So that's a whole nother area that we have to address. So what we do in our cognitive approach here in, at, the, at the Pearl is to look and evaluate all of those factors for an individual. Because if you just address one, you find one and you fix it, you might get a little benefit or you might not. Often you have, to, you have to fix a critical number of those things. And for most people with cognitive decline, it's 10 to 12 or more. Well, that's exactly right. I saw a gentleman last week who flew in uh, to see us and he had had three uh, major brain injuries from sports. Uh, he had untreated sleep apnea his hormones were off, his testosterone was very, very low, and he uh, had mercury, heavy metals. Mm -hmm. So just looking at that one individual, and there were other things going on, but right away we can say, well, if we can fix the sleep apnea, if we can uh, deal with the heavy metals, if we can uh, get his micronutrients repleted. You know, here at Pacific Pearl, we have a... Um, micronutrient IV infusion lab, and we are actually measuring what nutrients people have or don't have and, and replacing uh, what is missing. And I know from the cardiology side, you can fix people's hypertension, high blood pressure, just by replacing their micronutrients correctly, things like mm -hmm. magnesium, for example. So uh, we, we were able to get a program into place uh, that make sense for this individual that's more personalized. And I will tell you, he had gone to a Western trained physician and got a memory loss medicine without dealing with any of the underlying causes of memory loss. And to me, that's um, really not the best way to go. Right, this is a very uh, intelligent approach and, and it's wonderful that you have here at the Pearl the IV therapy, you have functional medicine, you have Ayurveda, you have Western medicine, you have everything integrated. And that's the model we need really to deal with complex chronic conditions and particularly heart disease and, and cognitive decline, for example, but just about anything. We need to look at the whole person and we have to take into account all of those factors. Yeah, and one of the things I always teach when I teach physicians, you know, I, I say if you have a tree and your tree has some sick fruit on it, you, you know, we're trained in Western medicine to say, oh, I know that fruit. It's called depression or diabetes or high blood pressure. I'm just going to go up and drug that fruit or I'll cut the branch off, right? Where if we had a sick tree in our house, in our home, we would say, what's going on in the soil? And that's really the essence of the work that we're doing. It's the micro and macro nutrition, the physical activity, how well you sleep at night. But I can tell you, very important for Vatis in particular, right? How are you sleeping? Uh, are you a hothead? Are you angry? Are you uh, depressed? What's your community? Who's your tribe? I mean, all of these things. And I always like to think of the soil. And then I like to think of the trunk of the tree as our DNA right? Because all these things come up and they turn genes on. That's epigenetics. And then the end result is, do we have a healthy tree, a healthy individual, or do we have some health challenges? And uh, everything that we do really should be toward health creation, right? Not just treating a disease. 
That's beautifully said, and I love your analogy of the tree. It's, it's like to live, it's to practice epigenetics today or to practice biochemistry. Everything we're thinking, everything we're breathing, ingesting in our water, in our food, in our interactions with people, whether we go home alone at night or we feel lonely or we feel happy, everything is impacting our DNA expression and whether we're being healthier or less healthy. So, so if um, uh, a health seeker uh, I don't really like the word patient, right? <laughs> yes. Or one of our clients decided to come in and see you. Mm -hmm. uh, what would that look like? Would they spend an hour, 90 minutes? What, what would that look like? Well, the minimum is an hour and a half, and I actually prefer two hours because to look at the Western, look at the Ayurvedic, um, get to know the person and who they are and their context of their life, and to address all these different factors. It takes some time to, to really sort through it all. But um, basically, people fill out uh, an intake information, so I have a lot of background knowledge before they come and sit down with me. And we go over that together. And of course, one of the things besides the standard physical exam that I would do would be to take their pulse. And that's something that you learned in the course. And this is a traditional Ayurvedic technique to gain deeper insight into the balance in the body. And what it can tell us is, is the heat off? Is there inflammation? And sometimes there's inflammation Ayurvedically that isn't showing with a CRP, for example, right, or a standard right, blood test, right. but it's impacting them. And that's something that we can address with their diet or perhaps some helpful herbs. And when that gets relieved, often symptoms will go away that maybe didn't respond to just taking a supplement or something that they knew to do before. So um, we address everything from an Ayurvedic, Western, and if there's functional things, either I will do that or I will refer them if they need IVs or something more intensive. No, that's terrific. And I think one of the beauties is uh, having the combination of being an MD, which quite frankly, will trained to recognize acute problems and major medical issues and so on and to act on those accordingly. I mean, certainly in cardiology, you have to do that all the time, but also the ability to say, how can we bring in some of this powerful wisdom of global healing traditions like Ayurveda to, our, to get our patients toward uh, optimal health? And that's, that's unique. And so uh, we're so glad you're here at Pacific Pearl. Uh, you are a welcome member to this team, and um, I, I think whether it's women's health or, gee, my memory may be slipping a little, uh, but let me get checked out. Uh, I think this is a terrific way to go, so thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm so privileged to be here and look forward to working with you. Thank you.